Hi, I'm Chad Smith, the co-author of Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning, the third revised edition, due out in the spring of 2011. Today I'm going to take you through fixing the planning problem. It's an executive summary of the demand-driven MRP concepts that we introduce in the book. So what is the planning problem? Simply put, the planning problem is the fact that inside most manufacturers and their supply chains, the formal planning systems, the systems that turn demand numbers into inventory of materials, plans, and schedules are fundamentally broken. How do we know they're broken? Let's consider some staggering research done by the Aberdeen Group in 2009. This study concluded that most companies are using spreadsheets, not their ERP system, for demand management. In many companies, this has created an effect referred to as Excel hell. But wait a minute. Most companies have modern ERP products. How can the planning systems be broken? In order to answer this question, let's look at an AMR research conclusion from 2007. In that conclusion, they stated that inventory buffers are at all-time lows, forecast errors on the rise, and a legacy of make-to-stock manufacturing strategies is crippling the ability of producers to respond to increasing volatility in demand and supply. This statement definitely tells us the world is a more volatile place, but most importantly, it tells us that there are legacy strategies in the face of that volatility that are crippling. What is this legacy? Throughout the world, the primary inventory materials planning tool is something called Material Requirements Planning, or MRP. Inside most modern ERP systems resides an MRP module. In fact, nearly 80% of ERP buyers also buy and implement that MRP module. Today's MRP is a legacy. It was conceived in the 1950s, it was codified in the 1960s, and it was commercialized in the 1970s and 80s. And guess what? It really hasn't changed but other big changes have taken place. MRP was codified and commercialized under very different circumstances. Today, the global manufacturing and supply landscape is a very different place. Variability and volatility have dramatically increased. All of these things have combined to create more complex planning and supply scenarios than ever. It is a world called the new normal. And companies are waking up to this complexity. A recent Aberdeen Group study showed that nearly half of companies cite supply chain complexity as a top pressure. And this complexity is going to continue. Kambashi said that constant volatility, variability, and variety will become the new normal even through the economic recovery and subsequent cycles. So what are the effects of broken formal planning systems in the new normal? There are typically three effects that occur either individually or in some combination. The first effect is unacceptable inventory performance. This is characterized by too much of the wrong while also having too little of the right. It can mean poor turns, high obsolescence costs, and ultimately culminate in low return on average capital employed. The second effect is unacceptable service levels. This could mean misshipments or miss sales due to shortages or inflated lead times. The third effect is often underappreciated and undermeasured. It is high expedite related expenses and waste. This is premium freight for faster delivery. It is additional freight due to partial shipments, and it is overtime employed to make up time created by shortages in materials. A survey of nearly 150 companies on BeyondMRP.com showed that there was no overwhelming majority contained in one effect, but that 82% of companies had at least one of these effects to a severe degree. So why are these effects so pervasive? In order to understand this, let's look at a simple rule with regard to inventory. Inventory is a problem when there's too much, and also when there's too little. Let's build a graph to illustrate this rule. First, the x-axis represents the amount of inventory. The farther to the right, the more the inventory. The y-axis will represent the value of the inventory to the business. On the top side of the x-axis, inventory position is deemed an asset to the business, and on the bottom side, it is deemed a liability. When we say asset, we don't mean it in a balance sheet perspective. Instead, we are saying that it is available in the right place and quantity to satisfy demand. Where the two axes intersect, the quantity is zero. Now we will bring in a curve that represents an inventory's relationship to those two axes. As the amount of inventory grows, it becomes a liability as the amount of cash, capacity, and space tied up in the inventory grows. Conversely, as the amount of inventory shrinks, it also becomes a liability due to stockouts, back orders, expedites, and missed sales. If we know that these two points exist, then we also know that there is a place between them that represents the optimal position for the return on working capital that we have tied up in the inventory.
The key is to define this curve for each inventoried item and then manage within these parameters. Traditional MRP, however, is not conducive to operating within this zone in today's variable and volatile world. Typically, its planning and management techniques force companies to live in between the two extremes with regard to their most important inventoried items. In the aggregate, companies tend to have many stock positions that are bloated, while at the same time they also have a tremendous amount of items that are too lean. Typically, these items oscillate between having too much and too little, spending very little time in the optimal zone. This bimodal distribution and the oscillation associated with it creates the three previously identified effects, unacceptable inventory performance, unacceptable service level performance, and high expedite related waste. Here's what we know. The problem is not going away in the environment or in the rules and tools with which companies manage in the environment. What this means is that the post-World War II mode of operation, called push and promote, is dead. It is important to note that conventional MRP was conceived, codified, and commercialized during the height of push and promote. Companies and supply chains need a better way, a way to better align assets with actual consumption. Companies need to go from push and promote to demand-driven. Here's what AMR research said about the need to move to the demand-driven paradigm. First, that there is a fundamental redefinition of the role that manufacturing needs to play in today's supply networks, underscoring the need for demand-driven manufacturing and agility. Second, that achieving the holy grail of profitable perfect order performance in today's volatile markets requires a paradigm shift from efficient to demand-driven manufacturing. For companies to go to the demand-driven paradigm, MRP must evolve. The new Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning introduces the blueprint for this evolution. Demand-driven MRP, or DDMRP, is a robust and proven method for the new normal. It takes the remaining relevant aspects of traditional MRP and DRP tactics and combines it with the pull-based or demand-driven approaches of lean and the theory of constraints, as well as introduces revolutionary new innovation. DDMRP allows companies to get out of the constant oscillation between too little and too much and all of the penalties and costs that come with that oscillation. It allows companies to live in that high return on capital employed zone that is so critical to sustainable, profitable growth. And early adopters are getting results. Consider the case of Oregon Freeze Dry, the largest diversified freeze dryer in the world. Prior to implementing DDMRP tactics, Oregon Freeze Dry used traditional MRP tactics with standard minimum batches. In their Mountain House division, sales increased 20%. Why? Because fill rates went from 79% to 99.6%. Perhaps the most amazing thing is that this increase in sales and service level was accomplished with 60% less inventory. In their Industrial Ingredients division, there was a 60% reduction in make-to-order lead time, no stockouts, and a 20% reduction in inventory. Finally, with regard to their raw material, they have had no out-of-stocks and a reduction of over $2.5 million in inventory. Another early adopter is Laterno Technologies Incorporated. Laterno Technologies is one of the world's leading innovators in products and systems for mining, oil and gas drilling, power control and distribution, and forestry. LTI has two main manufacturing facilities, one in Longview, Texas, and another in Houston, Texas. Both these facilities are similar in terms of capability, product complexity, and size. The Longview facility used DDMRP tactics, while the Houston facility used traditional MRP tactics. When comparing the revenue versus inventory picture between the two facilities, the staggering difference between traditional MRP and DDMRP can be seen. As you can see, both facilities experienced rapid growth beginning in 2005. Revenue grew over 300% in Longview and over 400% in Houston. The critical thing to look at is what happened with inventory in relation to that revenue growth. For Longview, the rate of revenue growth relative to inventory growth is nearly a 4 to 1 ratio with service levels hovering near 90%. In Houston, over the same time frame, the revenue to inventory ratio was just 3 to 2 and service levels lagged behind substantially. It's fair to say that Houston experienced all three of the traditional MRP effects simultaneously. To get your environment to DDMRP, a process must be followed. The process is robust, innovative, and also intuitive. The process is detailed in the new Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning. If you want to know more about DDMRP concepts, come see us at the Demand Driven Institute. 
We offer a variety of DDMRP workshops, online training and certification, and even on-site consultation. Also, become part of the growing demand-driven community. Join our LinkedIn group, follow us on Twitter, or join our Facebook group. This is Chad Smith thanking you for your time and attention, and good luck on your demand-driven journey.